Mystery Mouse Knitting Podcast. My name is Holly and I'm coming to you from Colorado where I live with my husband David and our five kids and our many pets. And today is June 6th. So it's Tuesday. Tuesday's my favorite day. I don't know why. Um, I think it's because Monday we usually go to the store and there's a lot of errands and stuff and Tuesday is just a much more relaxed day. So Anyway, um, I'm so happy to be recording today. I have a lot to talk about because I am going to open every single one of my whips bags, my knitting bags. So I hope you are in for a longish ride. I hope, well, hopefully it won't take too long, but I also have a lot of acquisitions. I have a very small book talk section today. I, um, I and I don't have a lot of whips or any finished objects. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. First of all, what I'm wearing, I am not wearing any knitwear, but I am wearing my glasses. I usually wear contacts, but I really need to go to the eye doctor. Um, every time I wear my contacts, they're so old. They're from before the pandemic was the last time I went to the eye doctor. I just have not gotten around to it. So um, every time I wear my contacts, my eyes kind of like sting after I take them off, even if it's only been a couple hours. So I think it's just time I'm going to have to make an appointment. So wearing my glasses today, I always aspire to look like a beautiful scientist when I wear my glasses, but I am not a scientist or, you know, so anyway, I'm just doing my best over here. But, um, first of all, so I don't have any finished objects. Like I told you, I have a couple things. Well, I have been working mostly on my faucet. So let me show you that first. I am very, very excited about it. Um, I finished, here's my faucet. I finished the body and a sleeve. And I'm almost done with the other sleeve, but I decided I wanted to make the sleeves longer and do more of the brown, which I only have a little bit left. Let me see if I can find it in my bag. Um, I have this much left. So, but I figured I might as well use it up. So I think I'm gonna take the ribbing out and do a little bit of brown and then maybe do some of this color work along the bottom. But I, I do wanna do brown cuff, I don't know. Hmm. We'll see. Anyway, um, just because I think I would like an even slightly longer sleeve. So this sleeve, I mean, the regular faux set sleeves are like really, they're just a cap sleeve, you know? And uh, so this is probably like down to here. So I'd like it if it was a little closer to my elbow. I have not done surgery on this yet. As I told you last time, let me, my short rows are not quite in the center, which is my fault. She does not have short rows in the pattern. I always put short rows in my sweaters though, cause I, I feel like I'm choking if I don't. So I, I just messed them up somehow. But it is an opportunity for me to change some things. Um, I was really playing around with the color placement when I started, and then I kind of settled on a much more uh, specific thing that I was doing here. Like I was doing this gold in the one by one color work sections, and um, I was putting the green and the blue next to each other. And then I often put the green right next to the brown. So what I decided to do instead of starting with green is to start with brown because I really like how it frames the, um, the color work to have that main color since there's so much going on in the sweater because I'm using so many colors. So I did cast on the neck again. Uh, it's here somewhere. Yeah. I did cast on the neck again. Of course, I'm dropping stitches. And I did the, the neck band in brown, and then I went right into the green since I like those next to each other. And um, you can see this. And I stopped because I was gonna do, um, I was gonna start the short rows and it was like 11 o'clock at night and so I figured I better stop. But another thing that I changed, I'm knitting the size five and um, I really like how it fits in the shoulders because I have smaller shoulders. And then I increased um, under the arm to get a slightly bigger bust size, which worked pretty well. And um, But I decided that I also want a, um, a bigger neck. 
The neck actually fits really well. I just want a more open neck. So I looked at the pattern and I cast on the number of stitches um, that was after the first increase. You know how she, the designer, which is Nitty McPurley, this is a pattern by Devin of Nitty McPurley. She, um, you know, when she has an increase, she'll say, say how many stitches you've increased and then also what your total stitch count is. So I cast on that total stitch count. I might've had to do one more because, um, because it was an odd number. So the, <clears throat> then I'm going to rip out or I'm going, I'm not ripping this out. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it right here on the last yellow line because I don't like this yellow line. I think it's too harsh. Um, so I'm going to do at least this many rows, but not do the increase. So I hope this makes sense. I hope it works out also. <laughs> so, but we will see. Uh, and then I will, I will put this on a needle on the first brown row, which I think is also an increased row. So that's going to be interesting. And then I'll graft or Kitchener from where that yellow line is. So stay tuned because this sweater is almost done and I'm still really motivated to work on it, which is great because I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's, it's gotten to a place again where I don't have to think quite so much. I'm just, I have to make, I still have to make decisions about what color to do next, which it makes it kind of fun. So anyway, I'm really enjoying that. And this is in one of my bags by Susan of Delightful Works. It's a perfect little bag. It's actually nice and fat. So it fits the sweater just fine. So that is my faux set number one. I uh, don't have another full set yet, but I am going to, which I will tell you about in my whip parade. Okay, in my bag by Stolen Minutes, um, this is another Nitty McPurley uh, pattern. And every time I get this out, I'm losing stitches on this also. <sighs> Hold, please. Uh, <clears throat> this is the Everywhere sweater. And this is a bulky weight and mohair held together sweater and I have made some progress on the first sleeve and I just wanted to show you. So last time I think I had just started the sleeve. I was like an inch in and now I've done a couple more decreases. So you can see it looks like a little nub of a sleeve. So that's that's all I have on this but um, I did work on this. Um, for some reason, even though this is a bulky weight sweater, it's not going super fast for me. I think because it is bulky weight, it's just slower to do the physical act of the knitting. And you know how it is when, you're, when your fingers are used to going do 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 and they're having to go like whoosh, whoosh, big, I don't know. So that's taking a little while, but I'm still working on it and I wanted to show you. I have not touched Toby's sleeves. Uh, so many things I have not touched. I will show you those things. The only other thing that I worked on, uh, since my last podcast, I think is my red wall socks and another bag by Delightful Works. This is my chicken bag, but I have been working on these. These are socks knitted in my, um, red wall sock set. And I'm doing kind of an athletic sock look. I did these three stripes and I think I'm going to do, I'm either gonna do the toe or the heel just in the regular color so that I can do the other one in the contrast because I'm worried that if I, uh, if I wanna do these stripes on the other sock also, there will be problems with running out of yarn. So, um, and I'm not sure, I might make these kind of shorter socks, like maybe, um, start my heel like here. In that case, I will not be, it will just be a little ways to my toe. This is a stitch marker by my friend, Elizabeth, and I will be talking about her stitch markers in just a moment. So that's all the knitting that I've done, I think. Um, I have done some secret knitting on my uh, advent shawl. Um, 
My Christie for Christmas advent calendar is in my shop if you're interested in Agatha Christie. Um, it's a mystery which story I'm doing the advent calendar on. And there is a shawl pattern included. You use your 12, 20 gram mini skeins and your full skein. And I'm very excited with how it's turning out. I think though that I am done knitting my sort of test sample. And what I wanna do now is start dyeing the yarn and it in the actual colors that it's gonna be. So um, anyway, that is going along and I can't show you that. Teddy is supposed to be putting Grady down for his nap. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's not going to sleep. <laughs> All right, so I said I was gonna talk about my friend Elizabeth's stitch markers. Um, she has been wanting to open a shop for a while and she finally did just the other day. So I am so excited and I would like for you all to go over to her shop and favor her items, buy some stuff. Let's uh, give her some love. She is a brand new business on Etsy. Um, her, um, her name I will put down below. It's EB and Co US on Etsy. It's EB and company. EB is her family nickname. So, um, but let me show you some of the things she has in her shop. I borrowed these so that I can show you. She is making some progress keepers and these are bead woven progress keepers. So she has these adorable little yarn balls with knitting needles sticking out of them. I'm not sure how the, uh, the light shining is doing it. Them, but here is a heart. This is like my doodle, the heart balloon. <laughs> it's got a little shiny section on it. I just, I love that. Um, she has some ladybugs. Ladybugs are like her, part of her logo. I think that is adorable and perfect for summer. And this one is my favorite. It's a little pear with a face. I'm going to take this one out of the bag so you can see better. I think it's so cute. So all of these are on a lobster clasp hook thingy. And they are just perfect for uh, sticking on your knitting. And like I said, these are all bead woven stitch markers. So she hand makes each one of these and they're all unique and I love them. So please head over to her shop on Etsy. I will link it uh, in my description box below and um, let's buy her out of these. She has a couple items also that are not stitch markers. I think she has a bookmark and, um, or maybe a couple bookmarks, but anyway, please check her out. I am very excited to see um, what she is gonna make this summer. Okay, now I have a lot of acquisitions. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> I, um, it just, it just happened, I don't know. First of all, I said in my last um, episode that I was running out of project bags because they were all full either of projects or of yarn that had a plan to be projects. So uh, Susan of Delightful Work said, well, anytime you're ready for a swap, let me know. And so I was like, are you serious? Because <laughs> so we did a swap and I got two bags. I got this one, which is so cute. I think she still has these in her shop. Little owls. I love the owl. Where is he? It's very judgy looking. His little face. Anyway, and it's got this um, minty green lining. And actually, I forgot, I, yeah, as soon as I got it, I put yarn in it because I needed some bags. But anyway, I forgot, I did start a new project. I started a little crochet project. This is in my uh, Brown Bear, Brown Bear yarn. I wanted to make Grady a little blanket or something because Brown Bear is one of his very favorite books. So I just cast on um, a granny square and I did, well, I did two rounds of the brown because otherwise it was so tiny but I just did one round of each of the colors. So I just did all the animal colors, nine different colors. And then I was like, oh goodness, that was so much changing of colors. I don't know if I wanna keep doing that forever. 
So I started making little individual granny squares of the colors. The blue is one of my favorites. Love the blue. And of course, red. And I think this is the, uh, the goldfish orange. And then I thought, well, how am I going to put these together? Because they're not quite the right size. Like, this is not quite half. You know, so I don't know how I'm going to... And I'm not a super crocheter. Like, I'm not an amazing... Because those people who are real crocheters, they, they just whip stuff up. But anyway, so I thought, well, maybe I need to do more of the big squares and then I can work it out better. So I, um, on this one, I started, so like red is my second color here. So I started with red this time and I'm just doing the colors once again in order. So, but I'll end with the brown. So I get them all in. So I figured that way um, I'll be using the colors up more, uh, in a more consistent way because otherwise, like if I did it like this every time, I'm hardly using any of the brown and I'm doing a whole bunch more of like the orange because it's on the outside. So anyway, so that is actually another little project and I kind of needed a crochet project, something that was not mindless, but it just had that different rhythm. So um, that is in my first acquisition bag. And then I got this little bag because um, Shark Week is coming up in July and Ann Pinkova of Politically Incorrect Knitters asked me to um, kind of participate in that. So I got a shark bag and I dyed a shark yarn. This is my DK version of Feeding Frenzy, which is my uh, Shark Week colorway. Now it's sold out right now. I put this up on Friday and it sold out really quick and I didn't have that much. So um, I'm going to be dyeing more of this as soon as I can. I'm hoping um, this week to dye some, but I made a big uh, yarn order so that I could have more um, DK because I'm all out of DK. And so if you want this in a different base, I'm going to dye it on fingering and DK. If you want this in a different base, please let me know. Just comment down below or um, send me a message in my Etsy shop. But I saved this one for me because I am going to make a project with it in my little shark bag from Susan of the Light Blue. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I think it's the second week of July like July 11th or something it starts. So I'm sure if you look on Politically Incorrect Knitters last episode or the one before that, maybe they'll give you all the details for that. That is coming up. Okay, so those were my bag acquisitions. I also got some more bags that I can't show you yet because Susan and I are doing a collaboration in the fall and I will be selling some yarn and bag sets in my shop. So I'm very excited about that and I will let you know about that when it gets closer. So I was, um, you know, looking around online and I decided to go to Chicken Lady Fiber Arts um, website because I had never ordered yarn from her and I just thought I'd look and see what she had. And then I saw that she had this. This is her May birth flower of the month thing that she's doing. She's doing a flower of the month every month. And this is the one for May. It's called Lily of the Valley and Hawthornberry. And uh, I wasn't planning to buy anything. I was just looking, right? But uh, it's red and green and red and green. And I just, all my willpower just melted away. It was very sad, but I'm not sad. <laughs> anyway, so um, I am going to make something with this. I might make, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I got it on DK. So it's very, I know that everyone thinks it's Christmassy, but I love it that it's uh, red and green and it's not Christmas specific. Um, but it still gives you that Christmas feeling, doesn't it? And I am all for that. So that is what I got from the chicken lady. She also sent me her little sample box. I was going to show you that, but oh, no, I don't know. I don't know where that went. Um, but she, for well it was my first order from her so she sent me a little sample box that has um like a color dyed on eight of her different bases which is so cool 
And that's so amazing that she has eight bases. I only have, you know, I really only have like three bases. I have DK and sock fingering weight, and then I have mohair. And I would love to expand, but I'm never sure what to do. So if you have a favorite base that you would love me to dye, just let me know. I um, sometimes just feel overwhelmed about those kind of decisions. Here's the chicken lady sample box. If you've ordered from her, you know what this is like, but she has a, a it's like a candy box. She has a little thing about her bases and then she's got them in here. It's so cute. So that's very interesting. It is really nice to be able to feel them and see what they are like. I am very tempted to call this episode my summer of Nitty McPearly. I might turn into my year of Nitty McPearly, but right now, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, Devin of Nitty McPearly released um, her gilded sweater about a week ago, a little over a week ago. And I wanted to get yarn from her to make that. Because for one thing, I do not have a Nitty McPearly sweater knit in Nitty McPearly yarn like all the cool kids. Plus, uh, I don't have a sport weight. So that sweater is knit in sport weight. And you could probably do fingering weight or, you know, do the fingering plus mohair hack, whatever. Which I know is supposed to be DK, but I think it's pretty forgiving in the gauge section. But that's knit in a sport weight alpaca yarn. And so I thought, I'm just gonna get it. I'm going to get the pattern and I'm gonna get the yarn. I'm gonna get it the date comes out. And so I did. So this is what I got. Let me show you my three colors. I got <laughs> Poirot, which I have wanted this color since she came out with it because I love that it's such a deep, dark, mysterious purple. And also it's named after Poirot, so you know, um, I am a huge Agatha Christie fan and names matter. You know, that's the thing. When you're trying to make a decision, sometimes it just is a little bit of a help. Have you ever noticed that when you're buying paint? Anyway, so, uh, this is going to be my main color. And then this is going to be for my color work. This is Morel, And I'm going to do that for the, the background of the neck area. And then this is Trinket, this gold, and it's going to be my color work stuff. And I am really hoping to make a very Victorian looking sweater. To me, when I look at the, the yoke, it makes me think of that opulent Victorian, um, fancy, I don't know, like, you know, like a lady that goes to see Sherlock Holmes and is like, it was the band, the speckled band, whatever. But that's what it makes me think of. And of course, when you see the whole sweater, it's got these like nice um, loose sleeves with the rapid decrease at the cuff and everything. And it looks very cozy and comfortable. Well, I'm going to do that. I might even exaggerate the sleeves a little bit. I don't know. I'll have to see how much yarn I have. But I'm going to bring the, the waist up and in like a little blousey. So I'll probably do the rib a little deeper. And um, I might go down a bunch of needle sizes for the ribbing just so that it, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is my idea. Can I wear this kind of sweater? Hmm. I don't know, but we will see. So I got, um, I got four. Ooh, it's so hard to hold yarn. I got four of the Poirots and just one of each of these. And I am... I'm like holding myself back from casting this on. It's a good thing you have to wind yarn out of the skein because if I didn't, I'm afraid it would be already on the needles. So that is my Nitty McPearly Gilded. Now it's so funny because that, uh, that came out on a Friday and the next Sunday was, you know, Devin's next episode. And then I won her haiku poetry challenge <laughs> and it, it was like oh first of all I couldn't believe that I won I just couldn't believe it it was amazing but and I was at my parents house um, we were having Sunday dinner with them and uh, we always go over there after church on Sundays 
and spend the afternoon there and because we have church again in the evening. So, um, so I was able to tell my mom and show her and that was exciting. So it was just fun. So anyway, with my, uh, my gift card, I ordered these beauties. I got Frost and Bougie on her Surrey Alpaca base because I have never tried a Surrey Alpaca base and I've always wanted to um, because it's, you know, it's like mohair, but it's not mohair. It's so soft. I, I have some yarn to put them with and I cannot wait to show you. Well, you've seen it before, whatever. I'm trying to stay calm. I gotta stay calm, all this yarn. Oh my goodness. So um, I, I think that I am a yarn driven knitter. I love knitting patterns. I love the act of knitting. Like I like to wear the product and I like the process, but I would say like 80% of the time my knitting is driven by, I want to use this yarn. But what I'm saying with my summer of knitting with Pearly, I have my Fossette. I have my everywhere sweater. I'm going to cast on this gilded sweater. I don't think I'm gonna be able to stop myself from doing that. And then I've got some other sweaters of hers ready to go. Like, I've got the yarn, the magical ingredient to make sweaters, yarn. Uh, I don't know if I have needles because sometimes I feel like all my sweaters are using the same size of needles and then I run out of needles. It's very frustrating. Um, but I have a feeling that there is going to come a point in my summer where I'm knitting like five different Nitty McPearly sweaters all at the same time. So we will uh, document this process, I suppose. Uh, or very quickly, I am going to do a book talk section and talk about my shop update, which I still have to make a decision about. Uh, so you can watch me do that. I don't know if that's gonna be interesting. Um, this is the book I just finished reading. James Harriet's Cat Stories. Now James Harriet, of course, as you probably know, is the one who wrote um, All Creatures Great and Small, All Things Bright and Beautiful, The Lord God Made Them All, All Things Wise and Wonderful. I'm getting these all out of order. And there's one more. Anyway, uh, I, I uh, was collecting those books to give to one of my friends. And so I don't have them, but if I see them, I will be getting them for myself also. But uh, these are just his cat stories, and I'm sure they're taken out of his other books because I think he has got a dog stories one too. But I saw this on a free book table somewhere and I uh, grabbed it. So it's so cute. I love cats. We have three cats right now. One of our cats is getting a little old and I'm starting to worry about her, how, long, how much longer she's going to last. She is my last remaining pre-kid pet. So... If you have pets that are have been around since before your kids, you'll know what that means. But anyway, um, this was an adorable book and I really enjoyed it. You know, he was a vet in um, England in uh, Yorkshire, which of course is such a beautiful place. If you ever watch Old People the Show, which is um, uh, Last of the Summer Wine, you will know how beautiful Yorkshire is. So I highly recommend that. And then I actually have a mouse book today. I haven't had a mouse book in a while. I was thinking about it and thinking about it because I think I've done a lot of my, probably, I probably have more picture books that have mice in them, but I think I've done most of my chapter books with mice. So, but I thought of this. These are paper dolls. When I was a kid, if you asked me what my favorite toy was, I think I would have said paper dolls. And I kind of credit paper dolls with uh, giving me a lot of, um, I don't know, fine motor skills when I was little. I cut out tons and tons of paper dolls, but I had these paper dolls when I was, I don't know, like 10 and I cut them all out and I still have them, at least most of them. I was very organized about my paper dolls in that period of my life. I have them all in little envelopes and I labeled them with my little kiddish handwriting. It was so cute. But um, this is out of print now, but I think you can get it, um, you know, on thrift book or uh, even maybe Amazon. I don't remember where I got this from, but I bought it again because I wanted to have everything. And then instead of cutting them out, I am uh, just making color copies. And if I want like the girls, my two girls 
to do them. So they're so cute. They're supposed to be sisters. There's Lavender and Pansy. And then there's, she's like the big sister and the baby sister. And then there's twins that are like medium. Hollyhock and Columbine. And they just have the most adorable clothes. So here they're babysitting for baby mice. And I love how they have um, little words that go with them. They kind of explain things and give a little story. Uh, the mice go to a costume ball, Valentine's Day. And I just love the clothes, they're adorable. And they always have, it seems like a, uh, or, or very often they'll have like something you can do to help set the scene. Uh, the mice volunteer at the hospital in the meadow. The mice celebrate Easter. I'm going to show you every single one of these pages. I can't, I can't help it. Um, the mice go to a fairy ball. This one is adorable. They all have like wings. Uh, the mice have a wedding. So I think it's supposed to be Lavender's wedding. They don't give her her groom. You just have to imagine him. What would his name be? Oh, she's marrying Timothy Meadowgrass. Uh, the 4th of July. And uh, let's see. Oh, the mice tell their favorite fairy tales. So look at her. She's got the spinning wheel. There's a big book. The mice go to the country fair. There's a carousel. The mice get ready for the first day of school. And look at that little chick. It's like their, their fellow school girl. The mice go to a folk dance and the mice visit a castle. And there is a tiny little doll in that one. And the castle one I love, I just love those kind of clothes. We don't get to wear those kind of things, you know? And then the last one, of course, the mice celebrate Christmas. So I just, I love this book. I love it. She also did another one, this Crystal Collins Sterling. She did another one with uh, teddy bears, which I also had. And um, of course, this is an old Dover book. Do you guys remember Dover books? I used to love going through the Dover catalog because they had so many paper dolls and my mom would order me um, stuff from there and you'd have to wait four to six weeks for it to come. Ah, oh, can't imagine that now. But anyway, that is my mouse book for the day. It's kind of funny, cat, mice. I love them both. Um, okay, so my shop update. This is the thing. I'm waiting for my yarn to come in. I can dye some stuff this week. I'll tell you what, if I am able to dye some more of my shark colorway, I will put that in the shop right away. I won't do a shop update. So please keep your eyes peeled. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll announce it on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Mystery Mouse Yarn. So um, I will be sure to announce it there if I put more shark yarn in the shop but I think otherwise I'm going to wait till not this weekend but the next weekend on Saturday so today is the six hold on seven eight nine ten so it would be uh June 17th at 12 p.m eastern okay June 17th 12 p.m eastern I will have a summer shop update. I'll put more, um, I'll tell you what some of the stuff I'm planning to do. I'm planning to do a strawberry shortcake mini skein set. Um, and I will probably even have some of Elizabeth's stitch markers as, um, uh, that are available with some of those sets. Um, we were working on that today a little bit. Um, I'm planning to do a strawberry lemonade or raspberry lemonade, some kind of lemonade uh, themed sock set. And um, I will probably do my final shark week update. Also, if I have any additional more shark yarn. And um, let's see, do I have anything else planned? Oh, I'm going to put up right now a picture of the July Nancy Drew Mystery Summer Sock Club inspiration photo uh, right here. And you'll be able to see that. And that will be available 
on June 17th also. So, so I hope you'll check that out. That will only be available until July 1st. Then I'll be taking that listing down and then I will uh, mail out those July uh, Sock Club sets. That will be one 100 gram, gram skein and two 20 gram mini skeins and a stitch marker progress keeper. Um, I just mailed out the June ones. So you should be getting those if you ordered one of those. All right, so now I am going to open every single one of my project bags. So in here, you guys remember what's in here? It's like a quiz. This is Toby's night sweater. So I have not touched this. I think I hung it up over here. I've got some like bags I always put my purse on and stuff. So, but thankfully, look, no stitches fell off the needle. Amazing. So I'm still like, this is my little nub of a sleeve, but I will get back to that. Don't worry because Toby won't let me forget about it. He's not that type of person. So that's Toby's night sweater. I will keep working on that. This is just a bag. I think one of my friends gave me. I went through this phase where one of my friends had a little sewing business. I don't think she was online. Well, maybe she was. But she made me some project bags. I just like gave her uh, some fabric and she made bags for me. So she made that. This is a bag by um, Toad Hollow, which is Mary Beth and Helen. And I bought this in the pandemic, I remember, because it's books. I mean, look at it. It's it's like the most romantic book bag ever. Um, and I used this a ton when I first got it because I love the handles. So, oh, in here is uh, some socks. Uh, this is Canon Hand Dyes, The Bull and Blossom. Is that a reference to something? It sounds like a pub. Does anyone know? Can you tell me? I'm just curious. I just got it because I love the color and it's on a sparkle base. But yeah, this is a, just the first sock. I have another one of Elizabeth's stitch markers on here. Um, so I think it's just a vanilla sock, two by two ribbing. Got all the needles in here there, right? Yes, that's good because sometimes I take them out. And I think this was a sock set and it has uh, a little fawn colored mini, which I thought was really cute. It's kind of an unusual choice. But anyway, so that's what's in here. That's good to know for, um, you know, when you need that kind of easy project. All right. I think I've shown you this bag before. This is another one made by my friend. And um, I love this fabric. It's wild but it's so cute. Oh yes, this is my yarn I want to make into a Christmas sweater, my Mushishi. And I've got two of these. It's kind of tweedy. Um, and they're really big skeins. They're 250 grams. So 491 yards. I think it's like a, like a worsted weight. And then, so I have two of those and I have two of these. Do I have really two? This is Knit Picks Muse Erin Weight. And it's a single because this is kind of a single. It's, it looks very um, Japanese, you know, like Noro, where they might have different, uh, they have a lot of different things in them, but they're all applied the same way. So I wanted to get something that was just a similar, but would be a contrast. And I am planning to make that's, oh, what, I can't remember what it's called. I'll try to put a picture of it. It's a sweater from that Color Work Bible book. That is what I'm planning to make with this. And I don't know, I might need to get more of the 
use from Knit Picks, but it's just bare. So that should be simple. I have several um, Christmassy kind of sweaters. I mean, that, that would just be wintery, right? It's not even like red and green or whatever. This is a bunny bag from Sandy by the Lakeside. You can see her little scissors logo. And I think I have random Grady yarn stuck in this bag. I have a skein of, I think I dyed this. This is like one of my, the colors that was in my advent calendar as a mini skein last year. I think it was the first one, a visitor from the country. And I had to re-dye it. Someone asked me to dye a whole skein of it. And I think I did two. And I was doing like different things to them because I didn't write down that recipe. It was a mini skein and um, for like a special thing, you know? But so I kept the other one. And um, also in here I have, I have a skein of Southern Story Time, Goodnight Moon. This is from a sock set. So she had this and this orange which I want to make something for Grady out of, but I, I stuck this all together because I thought, well, first of all, he's getting bigger. I'm not sure that one skein of sock yarn will, and it's one of many, will make an entire sweater for him. This is some leftover, um, oh, what was this called? Ferdy and Cogs from my Red Walk collection. I made something with this. I can't remember what it was. But I made something with this, and this is like half a skein I had left over. So I just thought, well, these are all kind of in the same color family. If I need to stripe something or hold it double, um, I might do that. So this is all full of Grady yarn. Okay. I cannot remember what's in here. This is a bag I made for myself out of a nursery well, it was in the nursery section at the, uh, at the fabric store. Um, oh, this is another, okay. This is another sweaters quantity of, um, it's a sweaters quantity of gloss decay from Knit Picks. This is one of my all time favorite yarns. I wish that I could carry this base and maybe I'll check into it. I don't know. Is Knit Picks doing, um, wholesale accounts. I need to check that out because I love this yarn. I love how it knits. I love how it feels. It is just a beautiful yarn. It has that um, little bit of silk in it. 70% merino wool, 30% silk, and I, I just love it. So I think I have six or seven of these 50 gram balls, and I have this 100 gram uh, bare gloss. I wanted to make a sweater by Sari Nordland, and I don't know what that was called. I will look that up, and I'll put a picture of it here. And for some reason, I think I saw someone on another podcast knit it. Does this look like a beard? I saw someone on another podcast knit it, and they used DK, so I thought it was DK. But then it's not, but I don't care. I'm still going to make it. I will figure it out. But I'm just going to do, that's like a color work yoke kind of sweater. So I was going to do um, red for the main color and white for the color work. And that will be a very Christmassy looking sweater just because of that. Oh, and that gloss, the red one is the cranberry color, which I love. It's one of my favorites. You guys should know what's in this bag. This is my Beauty and the Beast sweater. I'll just give it a little air. It hasn't come out of its bag in a while because it's sleeve time. Sleeve time, everyone. But here she is. I love this sweater so much. Oh, I love it so much. I gotta do the sleeves. Um, if you were wondering, and I've got lots of yarn left. I think I panic bought another skein of the dark blue, and I, then I found the other one. If you were wondering what my changes to the chart were, I will show you this. This has nothing to do with the original uh, teapot chart, but some of you might be interested in that. I think I did do the uh, the outside, you know, I, I did the outside outline ones. So if you're curious about that, that's what I did. And um, my goal is to finish this by my birthday, which is in October. So that will 
that will get done, I promise. I thought I was almost done and then I found a bunch more stuff that had fallen down. Okay, first of all, this is the only bag that I have that doesn't have uh, a project in it or yarn in it. So, just so that it has a home, I'm going to stick my uh, my gilded sweater yarn in here. All right, so this is my gilded sweater yarn. Okay, here we have another bag by Susan of Delightful Works. I got this at the Nitty Big Pearly Retreat in January. This is my uh, Hepburn sweater, which I haven't started yet. I mean, it's not a whip, but I wound the yarn for this. So this is in my, um, this was my exclusive colorway for the retreat. I think it was called, I have no idea what it was called. Oh, it's probably on the label. I have three skeins of this. It's Cozy Mountain Lake. And it's like a light blue with green speckly yarn. And I'm gonna hold it with just an undyed mohair. And I'm going to make the Hepburn sweater. I'll put a picture here. Uh, by Nitty McPearly. And this is a fingering weight plus mohair sweater, but it looks so wearable. You know, this is the thing. It's really nice for me to have fancy-ish looking sweaters because I can wear them to church. And then I don't have to wear a dress. <laughs> I can wear a skirt and a beautiful sweater and feel fancy. And I love it. So I don't make a ton of casual sweaters. I really kind of should do that. But anyway, that's another Nitty McPearly plan. I should call it a Nitty McPlan. You know, I got my, it was so funny. I got both of those packages of yarn, of Nitty McPearly yarn. I got them both yesterday even though I ordered them like uh, like several days apart. They, they came on different carriers and it was really interesting. They came the same day. So I show David my yarn and then, you know, I get another one. And then so I was, he was like, well, what was in that Nitty Mick package? <laughs> so can we start calling them that, the Nitty Mick packages? So I have a Nitty Mick plan. Uh, okay, well, what's in here? How interesting. Okay, this is a little bag, and I don't know who made it. It was, I bought this at the Interweave Yarn Fest in April, and it's really pretty. It doesn't have a tag on it. Look in here. This is one of my very first project bags that my friend made for me, and I love this fabric. It's like uh, railway tickets. So that's just a very small bag, though. Um, okay. Oh! This is the leftovers from Teddy's sock uh, tube socks. So I probably could make a pair of shorties out of this. What else is in here? Oh, Grady's Batman sweater. I was wondering what happened to that. So I've decided for Grady's Batman sweater, I need to redo the neck. His neck is, the neck opening is too small. So I need to, I need to rip out, uh, I might have to rip out to the uh, to down here so I can stop doing some decreases. I think I just did too many decreases for the arm side. This is what happens when you make up your own patterns. Okay, so I think that's all that's in there. Okay, in this bag, this is a bag I made myself and I actually turned it inside out because it's reversible. And I wanted to show this side of the fabric. It's kind of Britishy, and then the other side. This is what I had shown before. It's like letters. Um, oh, this is an ancient. You guys have never seen this. This is an ancient whip. I knit this sweater out of my own hand spun, and I have stalled on the last sleeve. Isn't that sad? I think that's so sad. So I, I knit all this. I think what happened was I knit the sweater. You can see how my spinning was different. I don't really mind. I, I kind of love it, how it changes. Um, down here, this is much more um, consistent. This is a little, a little homespun feeling. 
But um, I think what happened was I ran out of yarn and I was spinning it and I had a lot of fiber. So I stopped, I spun a ton of fingering weight yarn. It's just a two ply. And then I knit one sleeve and then I stopped again. So here's the rest of my yarn. I've got plenty to knit the second sleeve. It looks like it's felting a little bit in my bag. So I, I just need to knit the second sleeve. Also, I had trouble with the neck because I was just doing, I think I was doing like the the uh, flax, the numbers from the flax, but something happened with my neck and it was real bunchy. So then I took that out and I redid the neck and it's not bunchy anymore, but it is very straight. So I don't, I don't think I'm gonna take it out again though. It's just too much. So I just need to knit the other sleeve and that will be done. And this has been sitting for probably a couple years. I mean, I think since before I started my podcast. I need to do that. You guys can shame me into doing that, okay? Because I don't, I just don't know how else it's gonna happen. I have in this bag, I made this bag myself. It's a little wonky, but I love this fabric. It's mousy, it's Christmassy. It's mousy Christmassy. Look at the little people's, I mean, mouses in their houses. Okay, do you know what this is? all my cross stitch and when I say all my cross stitch I don't really mean all my cross stitch I just mean all the cross stitch that I was at one time actively working on I have in here my Frederick the Literate uh, which I want to finish so much I want to hang him up in my library area he looks kind of weird because he doesn't have any back stitching on so I have Frederick the Literate in there um I have a couple of kits that I haven't started. I got this from Lindy Stitches. I just love what it says. Uh, I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. And that is so true. And I love that. And I want to uh, I have that somewhere where I can see it. I also have, okay, let me see. There's some old treasures in here if I can find them. Okay. I started this years ago. This is from uh, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And it's books, it's 12 books. It was a, a stitch along. And they sent you a different um, picture each month. So I did Sherlock Holmes and the Secret Garden. And then I have Peter Pan. And then this is supposed to be uh, the Hunt, wait, no, not the Hunchback. It's supposed to be the Phantom of the Opera, but I wanted to change it to Beauty and the Beast. So, you know how it is when you change things and you wanna, you have to think about them. And, and then next to that with this castle, this one's supposed to be, um, it was supposed to be like the Lady of Shalott or something. I'm like, who cares about the Lady of Shalott? Let's do King Arthur or something. So it, it just started to be too much thinking for me. I'm not a cross-stitch designer and I want to get back to it, but I think that's why I stopped on that. Okay, this is my oldest cross-stitch whip. This is also quite close to being done if I would work on it, but it's so old that some of it needs to be re redone. But this is Four Seasons Cats in the window and you know what I love about this I love that they're all different and they're all sitting in the window and they all have scenery outside and like I don't know I think I started this when I was a teenager yes a teenager and I did the winter one first <laughs> because it was my favorite and I'm doing the summer one last because I am not a summer person and I really want to finish that but this has been rolling around so long so long. Okay, I think there's more stuff in here. Well, there's this, I wish I could show you this. Let me see, where's the picture of what it's supposed to look like? I got a couple of these um, from Brooks Books. And um, I got this one and the knitting one. So there is this Patriotic Angel and it's knit on um, perforated paper. And, um, I have a, it's like an America, Americana patriotic Christmas tree. It's like a little one I put on a table every year. 
So I thought this would be really cool to do and put like as the tree topper. So that's what I plan to do with this, but I just haven't started it yet. I'm a little intimidated because while I feel fine doing cross stitch, and this doesn't have exactly specialty stitches in it. Well, it might have a little bit, but it's just like, where do I start? And, and it seems like even though I, I've gotten a bunch of the called for DMC threads, I think I'm missing the ones that are like around the edges where I feel comfortable starting. So I don't know when I'm going to do these. I, I don't know when I'm going to have time to do them, but I love them so much. And I also got, uh, like I said, there's a knitting angel. So I would check out this Brooks Books. She also has a lot of free um, charts. She has uh, free uh, animals uh, that are like Chris little Christmas ornament animals doing different things. And, and they're amazing. I actually did two of them and I showed them a long time ago. I did the elephant and the sheep. And I would love to do more of those too. So that's all that's in there. Um, and those are my sort of languishing cross stitches. Oh, and I, I have one more. I have one more that's almost done. And I think I took it out of its frame. But it's this. Let me just show you in the magazine. It's this duck thing. And I'm really close to being finished with it. So those are all my languishing cross stitches. Cross stitch used to be my thing before I started knitting. And then I had kids and it was really hard to cross stitch with kids. <laughs> this is another bag by Susan of Delightful Works. I love this bag. She has some of these in her shop. Go check it out. This is Mary's Rosella shawl. Oh yes, I stole the needles off of this. <laughs> That's right. Oh, because I needed the needles, but I'm on a ruffle. I'm probably, I don't know how close I am to being done, but getting there. Just haven't worked on it in a little while. Oh, speaking of cross stitch, here is my mom's cross stitch. I don't think I showed this last time, even though I did a little bit. So here's where I am on that. I think I did a little more of the sleigh. I'm a little worried that once I get done with kind of the, I mean, the sleigh is like the focal point of the whole thing. I'm kind of worried that once I get done with all the, the cute, tiny, interesting bits, all I'm going to have to slog through like the tree trunk and stuff like that. But this Christmassy bag, which I made myself, I wanted to try to make a round bag, like a plate, and it worked okay. It's just flat. So it looks very pouchy, but it's cute. Um... I have in here the yarn that I am going to use for my Christmas faucet. As soon as I am done with this first faucet, I will cast on the Christmas faucet. And I just have some bare yarn, but this is that nice base. The uh, It's 80% superwash merino, 10% mulberry silk, and 10% cashmere. If you want me to dye something in this yarn, please let me know. I don't know what I would do with it. So this red is a leftover from my red Tenya sweater. And this green is leftover from my green Tenya sweater. And I think those are gonna be beautiful together. And I'm gonna hold it with, uh, this is Debbie Bliss Angel, mohair silk. This is a loft uh, mohair silk from Knit Picks. And I have, I only have two of these. This is Drops Kid Silk for the white, but I think I'm gonna have to just use some undyed that I have because I there's only I only have two of these, and I'm planning since this is gonna be a Christmassy sweater, I'm planning to do a little bit longer sweater and probably long sleeves or at least three quarter sleeves, so I think I'm gonna need more uh, mohair for the white. So I might just use undyed. So I only have. I have two of these, I, and I could have more because I have more of this, but I think I'll only need two. But I only have um, this one little bit of red and this green, which I think this green is almost 100 grams. I should weigh it before I start. But like I'm planning to do, like, you know, in the bobble row, there's the bobble, and then behind the bobble there is that color continuing, you know. So for the two bobble rows, but I'm just going to make, I'm gonna make the bobbles just the red and I'm going to 
uh, carry another yarn underneath either the white or the green. So, so they look like holly berries. Okay. I can't wait to do that one. That's going to be so fun. Okay. My very last project bag is from, um, Ray of Longleaf Bags. She is on Etsy. This is a beautiful bag and I have not officially used it yet because, um, I put some yarn in it. I just haven't used it yet. So, but this is my Knitty McPearly yarn. It's all messy because of course it's been, oh, it's getting worse. No, stop unwinding. Okay. Well, anyway, this is the, the Knitty McPearly Retreat Exclusive Colorway. So that is why I bought this Surrey to go with this yarn. Look how beautiful that is going to be. Um, so I'm going to put this in here and I also have, and this is a worsted weight. I also have her frost on a worsted weight. So what am I going to make with this? I've got two hundred gram skeins of worsted weight and two 50 gram skeins of Surrey silk which is more yards than the worst of weight. So I'm not worried about running out of that. But I want to make something, I probably should make either some accessories that actually match each other, think of that. Or I could make a shawl, which would be beautiful and very warm. But yet another, I don't know if it will be a Nitty McPurly pattern, but it's Nitty McPurly yarn, so. And I'm excited to use it. So remember, I'm a yarn driven knitter. So that's all my bags. That's a lot. I feel, I don't feel overwhelmed. You would think that maybe I would feel overwhelmed, but it feels good to have gone through them and to remember the beautiful things that I have and can use. And you know what? I forgot to mention the reason I'm going through all this is because I want to be part of Texas Peach Knits Fluff Your Stash. So Stephanie of Texas Peach Knits is running a fluff your stash make along through the summer. And so one of the things that you can do is go through all your project bags and look at your yarn, reorganize things, get things out, give things away, uh, use things. And so that's what I wanted to do today. And maybe next time I'll go through my, uh, my yarn shelf and pick out some some stuff to do with that. That's not even all my stash. I need to get to work. I have, I, yesterday I was packaging up my, um, Nancy Drew Mystery Sock Club and it took all day because I kept not being able to find things, not the yarn, but like just things I needed. I had to go places and get things. I don't know. It took forever. I did not knit a single stitch yesterday because by the time I sat down after I got Grady to bed and took a shower and sat down, I was like brain dead. So I am, and I haven't knit any today. So, and it's the afternoon. This is what happens when you have like other people in your house who want things like food. <sighs> but I think what I'm going to go do right now is make a cup of coffee and sit down and watch a podcast and knit. And so thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you will join in with Fluff Your Stash. And the Faucet Along continues through the month. And the uh, Shark Week knit, al knit Along is only one week in July. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else please say hi in the comments and tell me what you're working on. Tell me what you've done to fluff your stash. Tell me uh, what knit alongs you're participating in this summer. Um, tell me if you uh, uh, have any ideas for what I should make with that um, last bag's worth of yarn. Tell me what you think I should knit. <laughs> I'm not making any promises, but you know, sometimes if someone's like, oh, I wish you would work on the blah, blah, I would, I would do it. I would do it for you. And anyway, so I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye.